Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and this will be our 21st part and we will be finding some reactions here. So what we have going on is this picture on the left shown and the description reads, a light rod supported by rollers at B, C, and D is subjected to an 800 Newton force applied up here at A. So it says if beta is equal to zero degrees, so essentially our 800 is horizontal here, it says determine the reactions at B, C, and D, and we also have to determine if we can remove any of these rollers and still have a safe design. All right. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to set up um, our free body diagram and we're going to have to make some assumptions here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my reaction arrow since rollers can only have reactions perpendicular to the surface they are resting on. So my D has to be in this vertical direction because the surface is horizontal. Well, since my rollers here at B and C on both sides, that means I'm going to have to be acting in this general direction for both of them, perpendicular to the surface it is resting on. Now, since I have a roller on each side here, what I can do is that I can eliminate um, one side of the rollers and just fictitiously put the support on the opposite side. So in doing this, what I'm saying is that if my reactions happen to be like this, that means the roller is pushing back. That means the rod is pushing on these rollers right here. Thus, these support rollers are kind of grabbing it and pulling it back in the other direction if it is required. So by determining the arrow direction for this set of each of these rollers here, I can determine which rollers are actually supporting something and which are not. Because technically, these rollers cannot grab onto and then pull these uh, supports back. So it, the, for instance between three and four here, if this is the true reaction, that means that this rod is pushing on this roller here. And this roller does not, as we are told here, if we can remove some of them, it does not have the ability to grab onto the rod and pull it back in that general direction. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to put my reactions in this direction, this assumption. And if I'm wrong, that means that my reactions that I calculate will come out to be negative, which means they're in the opposite direction, which means they're technically on this side at one and three instead of two and four. So I'm just gonna call this reaction B, this reaction C, this reaction D down here. So we have three unknowns that we have to determine here and only one applied force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my three equilibrium equations of summing forces in the X, summing forces in the Y, and then summing moments about a point. And all of these have to be equal to zero for equilibrium to hold true. So I have three unknowns and three equations to solve for them. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sum moments about point D equal to zero. This will give me an equation in terms of B and C as my unknowns. So utilizing the 800 Newtons, which is purely horizontal here, so its perpendicular distance to D is 240 millimeters and it will be rotating clockwise about point D. So this is a minus 800 Newtons times 240 millimeters. All right, and then I have B and C, which their perpendicular distances down to D are already given as 200 and 100 for each of them. And both of these will be rotating counterclockwise about D. So they're both positive. So B times 200 millimeters and then plus C times two or times 100 millimeters here. And that's all I would have and need to be equal to zero. So I can't really solve for B or C directly utilizing this equation, but what I can do is I can use another equation in terms of B and C and then use the substitution method. So what I'm going to do is since D is 100% in the Y, I'm gonna say that one for last. So if by some forces in the X direction, D will not show up and only B and C's components will. So what I'm going to have to do is if I sum forces in the X direction, the horizontal direction, I'm going to need to know the slope of this B and C resultant force so I can determine the component in the X direction. So what I have here is I'm going to have to determine the overall slope for my actual object. 
So here is the overall slope for my actual object. We have a height of 240 millimeters given here. The actual length of it is just 300 millimeters, adding up all the three 100 millimeters together. And then I have this overall dimension here which is my horizontal, which I can just call H for horizontal. So that would just be using the Pythagorean theorem in order to solve for my horizontal dimension. So it would just be H is equal to the square root of 300 squared minus off 240 squared. And this would pop out to be exactly 180 millimeters in this horizontal direction from A to D. So what you have to be careful with <clears throat> is that these reactions of B and C are not at the same slope as the original object. Since rollers react at a 90 degree or perpendicular um, angle with the surface they're resting on, since these surfaces are parallel to the actual object itself, that means that B and C are at 90 degrees from that. So this triangle is pretty much flipped. So instance, for example, it would look like this. Let me move this 300 over here like that. So it would look like this coming down at 90 degrees. And basically my dimensions would be flipped. So instead of my vertical being 240, my vertical would be the 180 here. And my horizontal would be the 240 here. And this would be my slope of 300 here. So we can utilize this slope to get our forces in the X and Y directions for the components of B and C. So let's go ahead and let's work on that. So by summing forces in the X direction, once again, I'm avoiding any of the D reaction here and I'm only using the B and C components. So I would have my 800 Newtons going to the right, so it's positive, minus off my B reaction, which its component would be going to the left since it is down and to the left. To get B into the X direction, I will take the 240 divided by 300, because you always want to take the dimension that is parallel to the direction you're looking, divided by the overall hypotenuse. So it'd be 240 over 300, and then subtracting off C multiplied by 240 over 300 for the exact same reasons, equal to zero. Okay, so now I have one equation, two equations, with B and C as my unknown. So what I can do is that I can substitute N from one equation to another. So I'm gonna solve this one for my X for B equals in terms of C. So if I rearrange here, I have 800 subtracting off 240 over 300 times C divided by 240 over 300. And this simplifies down to 1000 minus C. So B is just simply 1000 minus C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thousand minus C, plug it into my moment equation for B. And this is what I end up with. So I have minus 800 times 240 plus a thousand minus C times 200 plus C times 100 is equal to zero. So in this equation here, the only unknown I have is C, so we can rearrange and we can solve for this. And if we rearrange here, we end up with 200,000 from 1,000 minus 200 or times 200 minus off 200C plus 100C is equal to taking the 800 times 240 um, on the opposite side. We end up with 192,000. So we just rearrange, solve for C here. We end up with a minus 8,000 divided by a minus 100. So C ends up being not 800 Newtons, but 80 Newtons. And since it came out to be a positive number, that means my assumed direction of down and to the left was the correct one for the reaction at C. Alrighty, so now that I have C, I can come back up here, plug in for B, and we have 1,000 minus 80, so we end up with 920 Newtons. And once again, B came out to be positive, so that means my assumed arrow direction of down and to the left was correct. So I have two of my reactions where this one is 920 Newtons and this one is 80 Newtons. So I just need to find my D reaction here. Well, how do I find that one? Well, I've already summed forces in the X direction. I have some moments about a point. I could sum moments about a different point, about A, for instance, and get D. But let's do the easier one, and let's just sum our vertical forces here. 
So once again, we are going to have to use our components here. So instead of using 240 over 300 for B and C, we will use 180 over 300 for B and C. So let me scroll down here. So summing forces in the vertical direction equal to zero. I would have my D, I have assumed upward. And then I'm going to subtract off my B, which is 920 Newtons times its ratio to get it into the X or into the vertical direction, the Y. So it'd be 180 over 300. And then subtracting off 80 times 180 over 300, both of B and C will be minus because they are going down and to the left. So their components in the vertical direction will be going downward. So D is my only unknown and it pops out to be exactly 600 and that is a positive 600. So I know my assumed arrow direction of up was correct. Alrighty, so there are my three reactions. Now, that only answers part A. So part A is done. Now we just have to determine which rollers can be safely removed during this loading. Well, in the beginning here, as I said, these rollers can only provide support if the object is pushing on them. So we cannot get rid of D at all because the object is pushing downward here. So D has to counter that. At B and C here, we're gonna be able to remove three and one. So one and three can disappear here simply because they're not doing anything because this 800 Newtons is oriented in such a way that it is pushing on B and C like this. Thus, the reactions have to be pushing in the opposite direction to cancel those. So one and three aren't really doing anything as long as two and four are there to su supply the support. So the answer for B is, well, one and three can be removed. So we've answered all the questions here. Now, before we move on with most reaction problems, let's do a double check to make sure that we are okay utilizing the reactions that we found. So let me scroll back up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum moments up here at A, and I'm going to be utilizing the 920, which is 100 millimeters away in the perpendicular direction, the 80, which is 200, and then D, which is 180 millimeters in the perpendicular direction about A. So summing moments about A to double check to make sure our reactions are okay and correct, everything should sum out to be zero. So our check here, summing forces or summing moments about A equal to zero. We will have our 920, which will be rotating clockwise. So it's minus 920 Newtons times 100 millimeters to get it to A. C is going in the same direction. So minus 80 Newtons times 200 millimeters. D will be rotating counterclockwise, so it is positive based upon our sign convention of 600 newtons times the 180 millimeters to get it to, to A in the perpendicular direction. And this should come out to be zero, and it does right on the dot. So that confirms that I do have the correct reactions with my check. So I've answered with B being 920 newtons, C being 80 newtons, both in the down left direction, D being 600 newtons upward, and then the final one, stating that one and three may be removed and still be safe. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.